I have started recording. Thank you. All right. Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome. Well, everybody's getting in and getting settled. I was just trying to figure out my ca camera angle. I'm here in the studio. Um, so you see our calendars behind us, but welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, Kirsten's going to teach you to paint this abstract um, leaves floral in just about an hour. So um, it's a pretty one. It's something different. I love this. Good for summer. And again, if you guys have questions, please let us know. We can answer in the chat. Don't forget to um, post your pictures after in the Plaid Let's Paint Facebook group, hashtag Plaid Crafts and hashtag Make It With Michael, because then we can see what you guys make after, because we love that. And Kirsten is going to be using Folk Art Paint, which is all available at Michael's. And if you're not painting along, if Kelly didn't say this, I was messing with my computer that you can always go back and watch this lesson and their other lessons in their great library of classes at um, michaels.com and their community classroom um, page. So Kirsten, go ahead. All right, so hey everybody, we're so excited for tonight's class. Um, Kira and I have kind of become obsessed with all of the really awesome abstract paintings that everybody is doing out there. We're seeing them on TikTok, we're seeing them on the social media. So we thought tonight would be a little bit different. So that's why we are doing a little bit larger of a canvas. I'm working on a 16 by 20, um, but like we always say, if you wanna do bigger, if you wanna do smaller, it's all about the techniques. And so the size of the canvas, you'll be able to keep up or you'll be a little bit faster but use whatever canvas you have, but this is all about the techniques of abstract painting. Um, my big thing with abstract painting is I try to match exactly what someone else is doing. And with abstract techniques, you'll never be able to do that. So what my only, my biggest tip for tonight is I want you guys to learn the techniques, to do the painting, to follow along. There'll be lots of tips on the flowers and the details, but if your background, your abstract is more navy and less teal or more green and less light blue, make it as beautiful and make it the palette that's meant for you. Don't overthink an abstract because that's when, when they become challenging. They should just be super fun and super easy. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is go over the supplies that we are gonna use for tonight. So again, I'm painting on a 16 by 20, just a basic stretched canvas by Michaels. No need to base coat, it's primed and perfect. We are using folk art acrylic. So tonight we'll be using wicker white. We will be using navy blue and we'll be using sky blue. So two really pretty shades of blue. Then we'll be using teal. And then two greens, a light green, this is wild wasabi, and then a darker green, this is thicket. And then for our pot, we're going to be using Pueblo. And this is a spot every class I te teach, people ask about color. If you want your pot to be a beautiful mustard color, if you want it to be a bright red or a hot pink, switch out the Pueblo for whatever color you want your pot to be, if you wanna be creative and do something on your own. So a new tool that I have never taught with here at the Michaels classes is this folk art scraper tools. These were introduced actually pretty recently. These are for applying paint for these new mesh stencils that we have, but they are also just a great basic. They are great for creating backgrounds, for working almost like the techniques that you would use with Andy or with Jess for palette painting, but they're just folk art scrapers and you get all of these different sizes. And they're just soft, pliable plastic that makes abstract backgrounds so perfect to do. So then we're also gonna be using the brush set. And all we are gonna need tonight in the brush set that I called out is a thinner liner brush. There's two in the set whichever one works best for you, because all we are gonna be doing with a brush is creating these finishing lines for our plant. Everything else tonight is gonna be done with the scraper. Okay, so always water, always some paper towels, always a palette, whether it be a plate or palette paper. Tonight's is easier just for those plate users out there if you do have palette paper, because you don't want the edge of your plate to keep you from loading these larger tools. 
um, but you can totally do it if you have only a paper plate. Okay, so that is all that we're gonna need for tonight. One more thing is a blow dryer. And the reason we always have a blow dryer on our supply list is because we wanna get you guys started and finished in an hour. And to do that, sometimes we have to dry our base coats. So have a blow dryer handy. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna get started. So Kira, any questions this early in the class? Oh, okay, can you hear me? Um, oh, I can. So if you do not have the exact colors, for example, for my kids, I have sky blue, you can always just use a light blue or a yes. dark blue and add water to it. Um, you can use, I'm just checking out all the questions I'm gonna answer them all at once. Um, you can use any size canvas. So don't worry if yep. yours is smaller or larger yep. or you're painting Absolutely. on paper or wood or you know anything that you have. Yep. And then if you don't have a scraper, some other great options are old credit cards or gift cards or yep. a palette knife. Yep, and a gift card would be better only because our palette knife technique works great, but having that big surface area, how big this is, a credit card would be even better. And you know what else would work? Like this is just the packaging, the card stock that the scrapers came in. But if you had card stock from a cereal box or a milk carton, you could cut that into credit card size shape. You could cut it a little bit smaller. You could cut it into a shape that's like this little small scraper that we'll be using. But again, just maybe an old, the side of a cereal box, just a more heavy cardstock, not normal paper, but something that's got a little bit maybe of a, of a glossy finish, um, cookie box, cracker box, cereal box, that would be great too. But the credit card, the gift card is perfect. And if you've got the time, maybe have one that's bigger, but it is important tonight to have one that's a little bit smaller because that's how we're gonna apply the leaves. And so if you have just this big shape, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So two little pieces that work as the scraper. Okay, how's that? Everyone feels ready? Okay, so here we go. So creating the background, again, don't be, don't be intimidated. Don't try to copy. Don't try to do exactly what I do. Really, really just have fun with the technique. So what I'm gonna do first, for no other reason than I love the navy is I'm going to start with the navy and I am going to squirt not too much because remember you can always add paint but taking it off is a little bit harder. I'm going to apply just a little dollop of paint up in that corner and then a little bit maybe down here. No rhyme or reason if it's a little bit over or a little bit higher. And this is just our first color and using the scraper all I'm going to do is scrape that paint in a downward direction. You can see you get the beautiful texture of the canvas. You get that beautiful brush stroke. And then you can see I've got paint on my scraper. So I'm just going to touch next to that navy and pull again. And I'm just going to go back and forth. Now these stretched canvases are very durable, but don't push all the way through but I'm just gonna scrape that section of navy. I'm gonna go over to this little drop of paint and I'm gonna do the same thing, but maybe I'll go in this direction. Now, the only place you wanna be a little softer or what I like to do is sneak under there and put my hand. When you're getting close to the edge, you can see the frame of the stretched canvas when you apply pressure. So if you just put your hand under there, when you do one of those scrapes, you won't have that hard line from the wood. I'm just going back and forth, not creating a square or an even shape, but just allowing that scraper to make some texture with that paint. Have your paper towels close by, no need to go into water. I'm just gonna clean off that scraper with a dry paper towel. And then I'm gonna pick my next color, which is this beautiful teal. And I'm gonna put a little dollop of paint right there. Maybe I'll put one more right there. This time I did two with the navy. Maybe I'll do three with the teal. 
smaller than a smaller than a penny just a little bit of paint working up here maybe i'm going to pull it that way see how beautiful one of the things i love best is the way you see the texture of the canvas almost like you're just polishing that paint i'm putting my hand under there just so i don't get that line from the frame i'm going to jump down to this little puddle of teal you can overlap the navy which is absolutely beautiful that's one thing i love about the folk art when you go over a dark color with another dark color it doesn't muddy that up you just get such vibrant colors and then this little third dollop of teal i'm just gonna go back and forth it's almost like you're applying it to your canvas and then you're using the scraper to scrape it off and this is where i love i love where the colors overlap so it gives you all of that dimension cleaning off that scraper again not using any water okay kira we've started the abstract anybody have any questions no, everybody is, um, I can see people scraping. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I can hear it in the other room. So I can hear you <laughs> yeah. and I can hear it on my computer, but nope, everyone's just uh, scraping away. Awesome. So this is the sky blue or the lighter blue, whatever colors you're using. And I'm going to put a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. We don't want to cover up the white completely. So having open areas like this are nice. But don't be afraid to put the light blue really close to another color. This sky blue is one of my favorites. So I want to add a little bit more of it than I did to these two dark colors. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sections. Maybe I'll start right there. And always pulling in a different direction. You notice I'm not pulling just up and down. or I'm not scraping just left to right. Just very random. One of my favorite sections. See how it goes over the teal and the navy and you get all those different values. And only on the edge, I lift that canvas. I'm gonna scoot down to this bottom corner and I'm actually gonna pull towards the corner. I'm gonna put my hand under that. And that's really just a little tip, just so you don't get that outline from the wood on the back, but allowing it to go all the way to the edge. If it's more comfortable for you, you can turn your canvas. And then I'm gonna pull Again, just very different directions, overlapping all of these colors. I'm gonna let that light blue come all the way off the edge again. And actually that line, it's really not that bad. If you like that line that the wood creates, it almost frames your painting a little bit. But if not, just get your finger under there and push up that canvas and that'll allow that line to go away. Then I've got one right here in the center. All right, I'm gonna turn that all the way around. Again, I'm just gonna wipe it on the paper towel. No need at all to use any water. And I love this lighter green. I don't want too much of it. The blue palette is what I like the best, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of that lighter green. Not trying to cover up everything that's white. There's some white areas in there, which I really love. I'm gonna keep those on there but maybe just three little areas of that wild wasabi, which is just a really beautiful soft green. I'm 
that same technique, just applying the paint and then scraping most of it right off. I love the way that green looks over the teal. Isn't that so beautiful? But you want, with an abstract like this, you want those really hard angles. You want both a big section and then these little sections where you've almost cleaned off your scraper by applying it to a section without a lot of paint. That's what gives you so much character in your abstract. Going over both the light blue and over that dark teal. But leaving some of the white of the canvas. Oh, I think I might like it just the way it is. The neat thing about working with the folk art acrylics is they dry so fast, so much faster than if you were doing an oil painting. So it allows your colors to just layer and layer and get all of this dimension. We only use those four colors, but we've got so many different values. And that's what I absolutely love about the folk art. Yeah, it's So beautiful. now just, oh, sorry, Kira. What, do you guys have any questions? No, you, I mean, it's beautiful. You could just leave it like that if you just wanted to. I know, abstract. right? A lot of people are leaving them just like this and they're just so beautiful. So now just to add some character, I am gonna go back, even though we've got beautiful white sections where our canvas is peeking through, I'm gonna add a little bit of white up here for no reason other than the blue is maybe just a little too solid, maybe a little bit down here because what the white will do, we've got the white from our canvas, but the white on top of the color will almost look like a different shade because we're adding light over dark. So same thing, I just added white on top, just like we added all of our other colors. And I am just gonna scrape that. And you can see how it's a different type of white. There's the solid white, but then this white has all of those soft values of both the navy and the light blue behind it. If you get too much paint on your scraper at any time, just remove some of it on your paper towel. I'm gonna turn my canvas a little bit this way and pull this in this direction. I love the lines that the scraper creates. And I'm even gonna add a little bit of white all the way to the edge over the white. Cause you can see it's just a little bit different shade of white, which adds some character. I love the white over the navy. You almost get like a really pretty, look, you almost get like a linen, real pretty linen denim texture. And I love the way that looks in an abstract painting. Okay, I always have to lean back and kind of look at it to see if it's a background that I like. I think I like it. Add as much color using the scraper. The great thing about this is that pointy tip, but knowing with these folk art scrapers, each side is a, each side is a tool that you can use bigger canvas, you could use the larger side. If you don't want the point, you could use that side. You're working on a smaller canvas. You could both cut a piece of um, glossy poster board or recycled cardboard, a smaller shape. But remember that point is nice to have. And these things are great to have because you will use them all the time. To me, they're like a tool just as important as a brush. Okay. So everybody should have a really beautiful abstract background that is just perfect for them. Their colors are right for them. The way they blend it is perfect for them. Okay, before I get started on anything else, does anyone have any questions? Um, people had questions about how do you get the paint not to transfer when you're going over it? So you don't need a lot of paint and you are really, when you're scraping, you're removing so much of that paint that the paint is drying really fast and work in yep. different sections. So, you know, do light green on one, like Kirsten has on the top section, but then move down to the middle or the bottom and kind of just give it a second to dry if you don't want to hit it with a hair dryer. Sure, definitely. And again, just, I haven't hit mine with a hair dryer, 
but like most of the sections are pretty much dry to the touch. If you've got, if it's not close to dry, you might have too much paint on there. And I say too much, too much for an hour long class. If it's the beautiful abstract that you want, you either have to hit it with a blow dryer or give it some time to dry. But the way the technique we use tonight, everything on mine is almost dry to the touch without even hitting it with a hair dryer. Okay, so I'm gonna hit mine with a hair dryer if anyone doesn't have any more questions about the beautiful background. Ready? Yes. Okay, here goes. Yep, and now it's totally dry. And you know what, a background like this, like you could do a bunch of different canvases, a bunch of different colors, but all using the same technique and then use these as backgrounds for other paintings, whether it be a beautiful floral or a beach scene, a, just a unique abstract background like this is something that you could have so much fun painting over. Okay, so now what we are gonna do, tonight's class is really just about Kind of having fun with abstract painting. So we are going to create this little area of color using these same little tools and that is going to represent our little planner box. So I am going to take the Pueblo and you can either apply it to your palette and I'll show you how to, to pick it up with your scraper or if you're comfortable you can apply it directly to your canvas. So I'm gonna use, just because I've got a variety, I'm gonna use the scraper that's a little bit smaller. And if you're loading it off of your palette, if you wanna do it that way and use it more like a brush, all you wanna do is scoop that, kind of scrape it on your palette, but then scoop it onto the edge of your scraper. Almost like you're loading a cake decorator with frosting. You wanna scrape that scraper into the paint and have a good bit of paint on your scraper tool. And then I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball where I want my planter. If you guys can see in this, I don't want it centered. I don't want it touching the bottom of the canvas. So maybe three fingers from the bottom and a little bit more to the right. I'm just gonna drag that scraper really just to create placement for my eye. I'm gonna pick up more of that terracotta paint, just scooping it up. I love that you can see the texture of the canvas. And I'm just gonna do another large stroke. Almost like a giant base coat brush, but that much better because you get all of this texture and you get that unique way that it ends. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that terracotta. I'm sorry, Pueblo. Almost like you would load a brush. I'm just going back and forth, but loading my scraper. You want a lot of paint on there. And then I'm just gonna scrape from left to right until I get my little planter, the desired shape. But you can see, I don't want my edges to be perfectly straight. I don't want it to be perfectly square. I want it to be as abstract as the background that we're painting on. I love the way the navy blue kind of comes through right there to create a shadow. The light blue is coming through right there. Really let your tool and the way the paint lays on the background create some character in your planner. So we didn't scrape it off as hard as we did to create the background because we don't want to remove it completely. But I love where you've got some areas that maybe you can see the background. Can you guys see that? You can see a little bit of the navy 
but it's pretty much solid. And a very irregular edge. Now, while my paint is still wet, because remember the Folk Art acrylic dries pretty fast, all I'm going to do is go in there and I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see it. See those little marks that look like details that we had maybe done with a liner brush or a small round brush? All I'm doing is removing paint with the edge of the scraper tool. So I'm just going to go in. Remove it on my paper towel and just almost sketch or doodle some geometric lines, some shapes. If you wanted to do maybe a little zigzag, maybe it looks a little bit more Southwestern, whatever you want to do to add some character to the pot that your plant is going to sit in. But all of these details are being done by just scraping paint off. Can you guys see that? I know sometimes it's hard to see on the screen. No, uh, we can see it. It looks good. You can see it? Yep. So you're just removing. Some areas you're exposing navy blue, some areas you're exposing maybe white or green, but it just gives you some dimension and some character. Okay, so then using our dark thicket, which is a beautiful dark green, I'm going to put that onto my palette paper or your paper plate, whatever you guys are using for a palette. And I am going to use this smaller scraper. So again, if you guys want to cut a piece of cardboard or cut a little gift card, cut it a little bit smaller. Maybe, let's see if these have a size. If this is kind of credit card size, it would be about a third, a third of a gift card. So less than an inch. Less than an inch. And really, if it's a little bigger or a little smaller, that is absolutely okay. And the pointy edge is nice, just to have a little point. That angle is not necessarily important, but just not a, just not a perfect square. Having a little point is nice. And then all I'm gonna do, now this is somewhere, whenever I teach a class, I try not to have people apply a pattern. And the main reason why we're not applying a pattern for this is because the background is so abstract, the pot that we're planting our plant in is so abstract. If you applied a pattern, you would almost work to color that in. And that's something that I don't want you guys to do. So don't at all think of your stems. Your stems will be last and they will work regardless of how many leaves that you add to your plant. All we are gonna do is kind of eyeball the section. So I know coming out of the top of my plant and I kind of am gonna curve my plant a little bit to this way. I'm never gonna touch the edge. I'm never going to come over here, but just kind of vision where your plant is growing. And what I'm going to do is load that scraper, just like you would load a brush. And you get a lot of paint on there. You don't want to remove any paint. And then I am just going to start. And I am going to start with a few leaves just by placing that scraper and almost doing like a half circle. That was on the navy. Let me go on to the white. So I've got paint on my scraper. I'm gonna set it down almost like it was a brush and then just kind of going in a half circle. Just making these cute little tropical leaves. You don't want everyone going in the same direction. So maybe this one will point a little bit more to the left, but you can see you get all of that beautiful texture. You get thicker areas, darker areas. I'm gonna do a bigger leaf right here. So to do that, I'm just gonna apply maybe two strokes, one on top of the other, maybe a few little leaves that are like new growth on the top of a plant. And right now what we're really doing is just getting placement. I'm gonna turn my canvas because for some reason my arm works best going left to right, right to left. 
and I'm going to put a leaf that's going in this direction, right about there. I'm going to turn that canvas back around, maybe there, just for placement is what we're doing now. Just small, almost curved little C strokes to apply the green base coat of our little leaves. I'm gonna have one little stem kind of shoot off in this direction. So I'm gonna do a few over there. Always step back a little bit and just kind of see if you've got areas that are really open. I'm gonna put one little leaf right here, almost like it's turning back down towards the pot. Maybe a little one right there. You don't wanna fill the entire area with green because that open space between the leaves is really nice since you created that beautiful background. I might do one, maybe one bigger leaf right there. Okay, so I love the placement. So now all I'm gonna do is continue to pick up that green and just kind of shape and form those leaves by adding paint with this scraper technique. You're not removing all of the green like we did for our background, but you're definitely allowing the texture of the canvas and the background to come through in some areas. I'm just picking up that paint. Just a real basic tropical leaf. Like that one doesn't have any darker shades of green. So I'm gonna get a little bit more. And then just like we did on our pot, you can see if you need a little bit more paint, add that to the areas, clean it on a paper towel. And I'm just gonna use that little tip again on this scraper. And I'm gonna create some of the veins that you would see in a tropical leaf. And I'm just removing the paint. Some show better because the background color is white or blue. That one on the navy is a little bit darker, but that's okay. That creates all that character. These are just the veins for the different segments of the leaf. If you want just one vein coming through your leaves, that's totally fine. If you want less detail, just don't use this technique as much. But this is just giving your little house plant some dimension. That one was perfect. You could see how the green allows you to get that light blue white background. Okay, so you should have some detail. You should have all of your little houseplant leaves filled out. And now what we are gonna do is using, now here, this canvas is pretty big. There's a liner brush in the set that we called for. And there is also this little baby flat brush. Use whichever one you're most comfortable with. This is a number two flat, and this is a liner brush. Because I want you guys to be able to see it well, I'm gonna just use this liner brush, or I'm sorry, this number two flat. I'm just gonna make sure I have a little bit of that green thicket, the same color that we did our leaves with on my palette. Not gonna add any water. I'm just gonna load that brush just like you would for traditional painting. And then here's where I want you to pick the, the main stem of your plant. 
So you can see in this one, I chose this right here to be my main stem. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball maybe this tall leaf and I want him to anchor into my pot. So I'm gonna start up on my chisel edge, which just means the flat end of my brush, touch down on the base of my leaf, kind of thicken that just a little bit, and then just loosely pull that into the top of the planter. I'm gonna stroke over that so you guys can see it. And you're using a number two brush, correct, Kirsten? Yes, I'm, okay. yep, I'm using the number two line, or the number two flat. But if you use it up on the chisel edge, it's still yep. a really thin stroke. <clears throat> so that anchored that one. And then I'm gonna pick the second dominant leaf that I like that is flowing in the direction that I like. So I'm gonna go with this guy. And I'm gonna start on the base of that leaf and I'm gonna pull that directly down. And the key to this is don't worry if there is another leaf in the way, go right through it because it would be in front or behind that leaf. To get the composition right, you wanna have some movement in your stems and some irregularity in your plant because no plant would be perfect stems that come straight down. So then this one over here, I wanna give almost an arch to. So I'm gonna use him as my guide. I'm gonna start on the chisel edge and not worrying about all the leaves that I'm gonna go through. I'm just gonna create a really soft arch. Going back over that stroke. He went right through that leaf, but he didn't do any damage. Just picking up paint as you need it. And then once you have two or three or maybe four really strong anchors that are allowing your plant to move really organically, I'm gonna do one more with this one. He's kind of going over to the side. So I'm gonna curve him down and over, not straight up and down. It's a house plant. We don't want it to look like a teepee with perfectly straight stems. And then what I'm gonna do after I have a few anchors, I am gonna connect everything else. So this little guy, I'm gonna connect to that stem. This little one, I'm gonna connect to that stem. This one, I'm gonna connect all with really loose, simple brush strokes. I might have one more that comes out of the pot. So I'm just gonna bring him over. This has almost become the base of the plant. I'm gonna bring that right through that base. And I'm gonna do the same with him. I'm gonna anchor him to the stem he's closest to. For that guy, I'm gonna anchor him all the way over on this stem. This one, actually this one, I'm gonna bring him all the way down, but really close. Everyone's leaves will be different. Everyone's little plant will look different. The key to this is just making sure that it's really soft and really organic. I'm gonna attach him to this stem. For this guy, I think I'm gonna come all the way down and attach him to here. I need a little bit more, add paint when you need it onto your palette. But always using just the chisel edge of this small flat brush. So now you've got all of the leaves anchored. If you want a few more, go in there. If you see some holes, I might want a leaf right there. I just wanna overlap that stem a little bit. I like a little bit fuller of a plant. So I'm just gonna use that same thicket, that same technique, loading my little scraper tool and just adding a few more leaves. And if yours is perfect, keep it exactly as it is. just a few little spots. 
maybe one or two more up there. Like my plant has really got some movement. I feel like Bob Ross, I'm not trying to be like Bob Ross, but I see now why he talks so slow and quiet. <laughs> when you're in the middle of a stroke, your voice kind of slows down. I know I'm not half as calming as he was, but I get it. It looks great. So just a few more leaves if you think that you need them. And then the same technique, scraping with that point to add some texture. I think I added one there and there. And then just making sure that each one that you added is anchored into the pot. I added him, so I'll add him to the stem. I'll add him, anchor these two. So then we have this beautiful abstract house plant in a beautiful little pot. And something that you guys could do if you wanted just a little highlight. So take a little bit of this wild wasabi, which is the lighter green that we used, just a little, put that on your palette. And I really am just showing you guys how to layer color with this little tool rather than a brush. I'm loading that just like we did before for all of the colors. And I am just, instead of scraping over all of the dark areas of green, I'm just gonna barely add just by skimming across some of those leaves, just a little bit of color. If you want to, you can tap the flat end of that scraper into your paint and kind of drag it down your stems. That'll give almost a little spot where the light or the sun is hitting that particular stem. Maybe in areas like I have a really strong navy blue background right there. So it's really adding to this area because the green is popping off of it that much better. But the reason I'm doing it with a scraper and not with the brush is because it's just giving you another layer of texture. But just barely allowing that soft green you can just kind of drag it over a few of the leaves. Maybe that one again, because that one's sitting on that dark navy. So it just gives you a little more personality to your abstract painting. Okay, I think that might be it. Kira, does anyone have any questions? No, but it's really satisfying because you just did it and it's amazing. <laughs> like it, this one was a fun one to watch. If you aren't paying oh, along, gosh. It's really fun to watch. It, it was so different. And it's it's remember, it's so many fun techniques um, that you can just use over and over again. So if this painting is not exactly what you wanted, just don't give up on the scraper and the abstract and the techniques, because it's something you can use in so many different paintings. So it. any questions? No, people are just finishing up. So you guys, oh, I, I know love um, it. they just, Kelly just posted that, um, you know, if you didn't paint along with Kirsten tonight and go back and watch this in about 24 hours yeah. and yep. hashtag your paintings on our Let's Paint Facebook group. Um, yes. Let's paint and hashtag make it with Michael because we love, love, love to see what you love. Are making. We love to see these and we even see them tonight. Like we're like, oh my gosh, yeah. did you see this? And this? <laughs> we love to see them. I love to see what you guys have done with the techniques. So yep. I'm sad to say I don't have next Monday's class sample painting, but next Monday is Chris Williams and she is painting the most beautiful pumpkin with a little crow and it's just very classic and very beautiful and I get it'll be up on Michael's so go on there because we're launching fall next week so everything will be fall this was kind of the end of summer 
Um, but next week's class is beautiful. And it'll be Chris here teaching you guys on Monday. Yeah, it's fall. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. Okay, thank you guys, guys so, so much. Thank questions. you, Michael. Thank you, everybody, so much thank for you. Uh, joining and painting. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Have a great Bye. night. Have a good week. Thank you.